All right, welcome back. This is Shadow Drake, and we're going to continue with the IC10 tutorials. Uh, the topic of this of uh, this video will be basic materials, printing, getting started, and understanding your editor. All right, so let's get started. Uh, for IC10 programming, really all you will need is an electronics printer. That's it doesn't need tier one or anything. You will need plenty of gold, copper, electrum and solder. Those four are your general electronics building supplies. So this does require a furnace. It does require you to be comfortable enough with the furnace to smelt those three, those two alloys. And just for your aware, you can always bring up Stationpedia, uh, look up a specific alloy, for example solder, go down to the furnace section or the advanced furnace, doesn't matter and see exactly what temperature and pressure and materials you need to get a specific alloy out. Um, solder being it's generally easy to make, just needs low temps, high pressure, just iron and lead. Uh, let's see. So what you will print out from the electronics printers are going to be predominantly IC10 chips as you see, they need gold, steel, electrum, and solder. Housings, which just need copper, steel, solder. A bunch of cables, like not, not joking, a bunch of cables. And then basically any device you intend to control with your IC10 housing, such as lights, switches, solar panels, and really the, the, sky, <laughs> the sky is the limit for that. And so once you have your housing, you can place your chip on top of it and you wire up and connect them. Uh, for the purposes of this video, we're going to kind of work with our base lights, that grow light, and that switch. Now before I get to the editor housing, not that, I need my tool bill. You need to be, understand that for a circuit housing, when you you need to use a screwdriver to set the pins depending on the device you intend to control. Uh, later commands, you may not even need this, but just having a screwdriver is how you set the pin. Uh, if you just left click on a pin, you cycle through the available devices that are connected to the network on that pin. If you press and hold C, you will cycle backwards. It's generally in alphabetical order, but sometimes it doesn't come out like that. Now one thing to note, when you press and hold C, you can go back to no device to clear it. This does not apply when you're just left clicking. You can see, hold C to clear it. Now, it generally does not matter if you are even going to use a device on a pin, only when you program, only when you add uh, logic to the editor to use a device on a pin will it matter so you could just leave drinking fountain and computer and pins and may never even reference them. But as soon as you decide to use those pins in your logic, they, it could produce errors. Now, let's get familiar with our computer. Oh, completely forgot, you do need a computer and you need an IC editor mother motherboard. So let's go back, computer. Just iron, gold, copper, oh. and IC editor mother motherboard, gold and copper. When you upgrade to tier two on your printer, you can per you can make your own laptop and with a motherboard, and all that does is allow you to take the editor wherever you want to program closer to devices. If for some reason you don't want to build a computer out near those devices due to spacing or other limitations. Alright, whether you're using a computer or a laptop, the first thing is this drop down box will allow you to select which IC housing is connected. This only applies predominantly to the computer because the laptop is contained to just itself. Import pulls any program that is in your chip to your interface export pushes anything you write to your chip. 
So if I were to export right here, it will blank. It will write a completely blank screen to easier to read. And so let's go over the interface. Now, just for sim simplicity's sake, uh, you have 128 lines of code that you can write. You are hard limited by this. You also can only write up to 4,096 bytes. And essentially, every letter you type is one byte. So just keep that in mind. This is only going to be a problem when you do a lot of documentation. Generally, you're not going to use up all 4,096 bytes unless you get extremely heavy with any documentation. Now, the library pulls up any list of codes that you have saved from for yourself or pulled from the workshop. Clear just clears the interface. Copy, I believe, functions just like copy, normal copy. Uh, maybe not. Paste doesn't seem to be as simple. All right, you can still use your normal keyboard hotkeys, control C to copy, control V to paste. This is just the transparency setting for your window. Oops. Now, SFX is going to give you essentially logic slop type parameters. This is going to be used with certain parameters, and particularly for devices that can hold multiple or some something else, such as like a filter slot. X is going to be some very general parameters log and logic types that could be used for different uh, devices. Uh, they give you brief overview, and yes, you can search for them. Most of the times, this tends to be constants that you can refer to. In particular, you can always search for something, but as you can see, if I search for a color, there will be a color dot black that you can use in your program, and this refers to a very specific constant. And particularly for LEDs, they will have a code uh, such that if you write color dot black or the integer that pertains to that, it will change the LED color to black. So those are your variables. F is your functions. There are some constants here. But predominantly, this would be your set of instructions that you can write with. And yes, you do have a search function to help limit your search. For example, if you want to do some look for some branch instructions, type in branch, let it search, and you'll only get instructions that relate to branch. Each instruction will also describe the general syntax you must use for that function to work, as well as a descriptor. And then finally, this will only work in single player. You can pause the game or resume playing. So if you pause the game, then of course you're not going to consume uh, food, hydration, air, or slowly die out, or hopefully nothing crazy happens in the background. All right. Now, one thing to be aware of, when you type something on the editor, you have to click confirm for it to save. If you press escape or just or hit cancel, oh, escape doesn't work anymore. If you just hit cancel, it does not save changes. And sometimes ah, oh, this is a new thing. It used to be that you could press escape and it would bring up the, the main stationer's menu. It looks like this has been changed so that when you press escape to bring up the stationers menu, it just cancels what you've done. You actually need to manually press cancel or confirm to leave. All right, that should hopefully handle, that should take care of getting started as well as hopefully being able to navigate. Uh, when, we, when we come back, it is going to be aliases define define as well as how to nope just aliases and define all right see you back